glory, glory, glory. Oh, somebody touch me. Oh, glory, glory, oh, glory, glory. glory. Somebody Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Touch me. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch me, oh glory, 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 oh somebody, somebody touch me. Glory, glory, somebody touch me, it must have been the hand of the Lord. While here at church, somebody touch me, while here at church, somebody touch me. While here at church, oh, somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Glory, glory, oh, somebody touch me. Oh, glory, glory, glory. glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Do it again. Oh, glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. One more time. Oh, glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 I know he touched me. Glory, 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 I know he touched me. Touch me with the hand of the Lord. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 I know he touched me. Glory, 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 I know he I say unto my children, count it all joy when you're under attack. For I know that you were going to be under attack and I commanded you, I instructed you to find joy there. For I am the Lord your God and I will not leave you desolate. I will rescue my people. My people are always on my mind. They are always on my mind. They're on my heart. I tell you today, enjoy the life that I have given you. Regardless of what you're walking through, you do not walk alone. I am always with you. It's sometimes you don't even see me until the end, but I'm telling you to get your eyes on me at the beginning. For I know the ending before the beginning. For I am the Lord God and all things are under my power. <laughs> Oh, glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. I thank somebody you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Come on, church. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 oh, somebody touch me, it must have been the well, hand Rabbi, of the Lord. While I am singing, oh, somebody touch me, oh, while I am singing, somebody touch me. While I am singing, somebody touch me, it If you must need a touch of the Lord, the reach out. Lord. Oh, glory, 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 somebody. Touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, it must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was hurting, oh, somebody touch me. Oh, while I was hurting, somebody touch me. While I was hurting, oh, somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. 
somebody touch me it must have been the hand of the lord it must have been the hand of the lord hallelujah do you know the lord's touched you this morning did he touch you this week Hallelujah. I heard testimonies on the way into church this morning of how God has showed up into people's life. And some of them, it's a miracle what happened. And if she feels like it, she'll share it. You'll raise your hand and I'll know. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Brother Eddie, it's good to have you back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) Sister Debbie, it's wonderful to have you back. Sister Debbie Williams. You and your dad, it's wonderful to see you here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to turn around to somebody and, and I want you to say, I'm expecting from the Lord today. I'm expecting from the Lord today. Now I want you to turn back to that same person and say, and today I'm going to receive. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Nelson, hallelujah. I want to give you praise and glory and honor, Lord. up with you and I will be your God and you will be my child I stand at the door and knock I knock for the backslider I knock for the unsaved I am telling you that I am coming shortly shortly you have no idea how shortly I speak unto you this morning my children listen to me you must be on guard for the enemy of your soul is out to devour you and you must finish this race to win the prize I am telling you you must keep on guard The enemy of your soul is out to sift you as wheat. But I am the Lord your God. And if you will crucify your flesh and come unto me, I will give you strength for the day. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the way the Holy Spirit is moving. Now be if our pastor, be if all of us, that we will receive your blessing, dear God. Thank you and give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Would y'all shut them doors in the back? It's shining on my head and people can't see. I just tested to see if y'all was awake. <laughs> okay. In the way of announcements, there will be no youth meeting today, but tonight we'll service tonight at 6.30. Okay? Any other announcements? Hallelujah. Announcements. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. You can laugh in church. Oh, my goodness. God is so good. It's such a privilege to come in with a body of believers and, and worshiping. It is so wonderful. All right, let me get a hold of myself. Uh, I just want to, I think, oh, two things I got to. The first one is the Daniel. The list is still out there. Um, it, it's got 50 people on it, I think, and I think people think they can't sign up past that, but I wrote a note on it and announced it. Keep signing up if you want to go because if somebody drops out, I need to know who to call next on the list. Um, if you aren't going, I need to know by uh, no later than August the 1st, okay? Uh, the, the deadline is July. They, they've got to have their money in July. But if somebody says, I'm not going to be able to go, I have to know so that I can fill that spot. August the 8th, the day after our anniversary, if that helps you any. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> today is the last day. I keep it confined to the church. If no one signs up today, um, then I'm going to open it up to the public. So if there's somebody outside of our church that wants to go uh, and you know, 
uh, you need to get their name on that list. But don't put it on our day because it's over to the church first. Um, the other is the women's conference. Um, some of you know that women's retreat that down the road here at our old church uh, with Pam reading him. Uh, what's the name of that? Mercy? Mercy Harbor. They were going to have Jan last weekend uh, for three days. And um, they had to cancel it. But it was canceled because Jan's mother's dying. And um, so she needed to be with her mother. And I, I don't know any update on that yet. But um, for our retreat, it's looking great. Oh, we, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to have to be absolutely beautiful. And what the Lord has planned for us ladies is going to be wonderful. So if you haven't signed up, make sure that you sign up. I've had some ladies ask me about their, their little girls. This is where I'm at on that. We do not offer a nursery. They cannot be left in the nursery alone without a supervising adult over the age of 16. 16, and they have to have had the, the class. And they have to have an 18-year-old in there. So it makes it difficult for those two that might want to be in the conference. Um, small children... I know some of you mothers can't get away because you don't have a babysitter. Um, I don't have an issue with that, but if the child is crying or fussing, you'll need to take it out to the nursery because I don't want to take away from the people that are there to receive. Um, and some people can't hear very good. So if it's a crying, then they can't hear. So I'm not being mean. I'm just trying to be fair to everybody. Um, so we're looking forward to it. Um, the ladies that has been on the team, I'd like for you all to stand the team of planning. Has that got everybody? That got everybody? Say, uh, these are the ladies that have helped. That I prayed how God wanted me to go and who he wanted me to include. I didn't leave anybody out. I went with who exactly the Holy Spirit showed me to go to and for what reason. So I want to thank these ladies because they have been a, a very valuable asset in everything that we're doing, and God is using them and raising them up, and I want to thank them. Um, Sign up, register. Uh, we still got a few places. I'm not sure how much, but somebody's going to get a. Is it a nice gift, ladies, that has seen it? Yes, it's a nice gift. If you've pre registered and paid, thank you. And now we'll turn it over to Nelson. Let's get rid of this dryness in here, y'all. Y'all shake it off. I, everybody's going to think I'm crazy here, but I do. When the Lord drops something in my, you know it, I do it. I want everybody to do this. On three. One, two, three. Blow that old dry dust out of here. <laughs> Not speaking of anybody as dry dust, but spirits, you know, they're dry. I, I don't know why I'm going to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, give me one time. You give me a second time. <laughs> okay. All right. Your birthdays. Any birthdays? One. Birthday? Oh, you stand in, okay. <laughs> okay. Remain standing. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Okay, any anniversaries? Anniversaries. Hey, how many, brother? All of them. <laughs> 46. 46, amen. See, right? I don't know how many, I don't know how many people was here Sunday night. But, but y'all was trying to get me to sing. We got a surprise. Amen. This brother can sing. Yes, can. And hey, and he was. Amen? Amen. Amen. He, you did a fantastic job, brother. <laughs> Remain standing. <laughs> oh, oh, how many? How many? Eight, okay. Okay. Happy anniversary to you. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many more. Amen. You
may be seated. Okay, our thought for the day. Death leaves a heartache that no one can heal but God. But love leaves a memory no one can steal. Okay. Just, Jeannie's got this fan up here. And she likes it. But when it blows on me, it, I get a coughing, and I can't, I lose my voice. I, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey, brother, when I get up here, I'm sweating. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's blowing my hair. That's one. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> All right, come on, let's, let's get serious, people. Come on. <laughs> Any private, private questions, just raise your hand. Okay. Tommy Triggs? Okay. And so remember Wayne and Becky uh, Clark. Clark. Okay, let's all stand. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you praise, we give you honor. We thank for another opportunity to come in your house to praise you. Amen. Now you heard each prayer request, dear God, you know each prayer request. Go through the pews, dear God, and touch each one, and touch their families, dear God. We pray for our lost families, dear God, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. We pray for salvation, we pray for healing, dear God. People, people that are depressed or discouraged, dear God, touch them in a mighty way. That be with this service, meet all our needs, and we know that you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll take up our tithes and offerings. Let's just come forth. Uh, let's go to the river. I said. Ushers, please. I need one more. Okay. Heavenly right. Father, Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, uh, we just humbly bow to you, Lord, the way I look at it. <laughs> just to think how blessed we are. <laughs> just to humbly give back to you what you give to us, Lord, just to use it for the uplifting of your kingdom. In the name we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, river. Let's all stand up. Is that I? I hope everybody in here's been baptized. But this is the time of year that if you haven't, you need to be thinking about it. Well, let's all go down to the river. There's a man that's walking on the water. And come along with me. All I want to see is that man walking on the water. Well, Jesus is the man at the river. And he's washing all our sins away. He can save your soul if you give him control. You'll be ready on that judgment day. Well, let's all go down to the river. Oh, there's a man that's walking on the water. Come along with me. All I want to see is that man walking on the water. Now he can raise the dead from the grave. Take the water and turn it into wine. He can make the lame walk and he can and open up the eyes of the blind. Well, let's all go down to the river. There's a man that's walking on the water. Come along with me. All I want to see is that man walking on the water. Well, let's all go down to the river. That's walking on the water. Come along with 
come along with me. All I want to see is that man walking on the water. Now Jesus is the man at the river, and he's washing all our sins away. And he can save your soul if you give him control, you'll be ready on that judgment day. Oh, let's all go down to the river. Oh, there's a man that's walking on the water. Oh, come along with me. All I want to see is that man walking on the water. Well, let's all go down to the river. Oh, there's a man that's walking on the water. Come along with me. All I is that man walking on the water? Yes, come along with me. All I want to see is that man walking on the water. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Uh, just a couple quick things. Starting tonight, we're going to start our Bible study on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, the who, when, where, and how that the gifts are to operate in the church. So we're going to start that tonight. So I encourage everyone to come out. If you don't know how the Holy Spirit is supposed to operate, we're going to be teaching on, on that. And, uh, and so I uh, encourage everyone to come out. Amen. And so uh, that will start tonight. Uh, next up. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows it, but uh, yesterday, yesterday evening, last night, Iran bombed Israel. And uh, I don't know if anybody knows it. Uh, someone asked me even yesterday or today, I can't remember, uh, what what about the Jews that really doesn't believe in Jesus Christ? You know, if they die, they're going to die lost just like anybody else. Just because they God's chosen people. If you do not have, I'll, I'll encourage everybody here. If you do not have Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life, you're going to die and go to hell. It's just that simple. And, and, and it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or not. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Jew, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a born again Jew. So I, I'm of the commonwealth. I was grafted in by, by my salvation, and every person here is. But God's word tells us, regardless of where they're at spiritually, God's word told us to pay for, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pay for Jerusalem. We, we are. We are by uh, spiritual laws required to pray for Jerusalem or pray for Israel. If you do not like it, uh, you, that's just what the Bible tells us. And yes. and you may say, well, what what's so vital about this? First off, we're close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. and He could come at any time. And we, you know, and we we have prophetic word, and we and we have prophecy, and. We know Russia's got to come down, but Russia's not that far from Israel. We know China's going to come in, and I'm not going into all the prophecy, but, but what I am telling us this morning, God's word requires us to pray for Jerusalem. And so for these next few moments of time, if you want to gather at this altar or you want to remain in your pew, but I'd like to see some people around this altar, we're going to spend some time and we're going to pray, we're going to pray for Israel. We're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. What the, will y'all come? Any other praise team that wants to pray right now? Just kind of do it, and then we'll bring the Lord to y'all. Let, let's just right now, uh, not even no music or nothing. Let's just let's just let's just pray. Uh, you can, and you can pray where you at. You can pray kneeling. You can pray standing. If you can, yeah, I, I know, but I'm telling the congregation, you could turn around in your pew if you don't, or in your chair if you don't want to come up here. But we need. To, but if you can, we need to. We need to be on our face before God to to pray for them. While we are coming, I just really feel impressed to say this. Um, I've been doing some studying in Romans because that was my class for that I had to take yesterday. But I just feel impressed of the Lord to remind the people that. When God says that his time is close, his coming is close, he means it. We don't know the day or the hour, the minute or the second. But 
I do know that when the, when the rapture takes place, immediately after the rapture, God's going to pour his wrath out on the earth. That's what he said. For their disobedience and unbelief, the people that are left here, it's not going to be going on as usual. God is going to pour out his wrath upon the earth. And he said, and I will deal with Israel. It is so important that we pray for our, the lost, not just our family, but the lost, because it's always somebody on the brink of receiving Christ. And it just takes a minute, not even a minute, to lead them in a prayer. So it is very serious. Please take it seriously. And um, let's all come together in agreement and pray. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, David Jeremiah said this morning, and and I knew this, but it just it just I read and resonated with me. You know, there's seven billion people on the face of the earth alive today. That's seven billion. That ain't counting the people that's lived from Christ to now. Do you realize it's going to be billions of people saved? But you know what? It's going to be billions of people also lost. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm not talking about, you know, you look at our community, 30,000, you know, for Macedon and all. I'm not talking about thousands. I'm talking about billions of people are going to die lost. Yes, uh, Brother Keith said, you know, and they they got saved. We had a college student here Easter Sunday, was in college, had never been in a church. 19 or 20 years old, had never been in a church, but they didn't leave lost. Yeah. Amen. They, they left, and they, they had... Never, they had never experienced Christ. How many people has never experienced Christ? So let's continue to pray for pray for Israel. But God's word says He specifically said, pay, "Pray for the peace of Jerusalem." I had this vision. Somebody has a. I had this vision. I want to share it. If your name, your first name begins with the letter, uh, from the letter A to the letter, I think it was, uh, what's the 13th letter? 
I was going to say J. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. If your first name begins with A through M, stand up. All right. All right, sit back down. If your name begins with N through Z, stand up. All right. This is just an illustration because I saw it on TV this morning. The Lord brought it back. Not this illustration, but he brought this back to me. No, don't sit down. Stand up. Stay up. Stay up. I want you to look around. Turn around and look around at everybody that's sitting. This is an illustration. Should the, the, the Lord return at this moment, let's just say that, and everybody that seated was left, and only the ones that were standing went, that's what it's going to be like. One will be in the field, and one will be, two will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two will be on the roof, one will be taken, one will be left. Um, and I'm not saying that you people are unsaved. I'm just giving you an illustration. That's what it's going to be like. All of a sudden, people's going to be gone. And, and he was, you can be seated now. And he was sharing on that Facebook. Do you know how, how many ways this is going to be caught? On camera, it's going to be caught by police officers with their video camera where they have to be out. Um, it'll be called at people filling ga up at the gas station, people on planes. This is the one that touched my heart. Was um, school buses filled with elementary children. All of a sudden, all the children was gone and the driver was left. Because at a up until a certain age, they aren't accountable. So if you got a bus full of f uh, first and second graders, they're going to go. <laughs> but think about that and it was people in the doctor's office it was people in the surgery I thought about hope people in surgery all of a sudden they turn around the patient's gone people were standing there I mean it is going to be I want to say great and terrible it's going to be great for those to go but terrible for those that are left behind because when God pours out his wrath read a little bit about his wrath in Revelation we don't want to be here he's been long suffering and patient and there's going to be a time where he said, that's enough. Hallelujah. We're going to go into worship because I think we need to worship the God of Israel. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you got your mic? God gave me this a couple weeks ago. And Pastor always said, wait until God tells you to share it's not always the time at that time to share. And where this was given to me, that wasn't the place to share. But God's laid this on my heart this morning, and I'm going to share it. God gave me this on my birthday. Special day. Special words, and I want you to listen to the words that God spoke. Are you here this morning? Your heart is full of sin. Just open up your heart door and let the Savior in. The Master now is calling. I know you feel him near. Here. But you have paused to think, is it me or is it him? You know it is the Savior who's speaking to your heart. But still you linger as any more and not move to ask him to your heart. How long will you stand there and not open up your heart? Will you wait too long to answer until the spirit has departed? And then you are left forever and cannot find your way. You've waited until the spirit left and you know you'll be cast away. into outer darkness for all eternity without the blessed Savior and torment you will be. So why do you wait and linger to call upon the Lord? He's standing here this morning knocking on your heart's door. Man, that was right along that message. Amen. Boy, God is just awesome <laughs> confirming his beautiful self. We're going to start out with you are holy worthy of it all and then we'll go down through our practice come uh, 
Do you want us to do this now? Or he said, everybody that wants to come to the altar, this is a time to worship the Lord. You'll have time for prayer. If you need prayer, they'll pray at the end of the service. But this is a time for us to come and worship the King of kings and Lord of lords and give him, pay homage to him. You little ones can kneel down right there to step and pray if you want to. Thank you for being obedient and coming before him. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory and exalted high.
You know, I was thinking, wouldn't it, I'm sure it is, but wouldn't it be awesome in, this, in, the, uh, in Israel, people were standing out singing something like this to God in the middle of everything that's happening, that they chose to stand and worship God because He's worthy and everything is in His hands, just like it says, all things are in your hands. But not just Israel, all over the world, if the believers are standing and worshiping God and acknowledging Him for who He is, He's going to show up. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to go into you are worthy of it all. So Shandor Assembly of God, let's worship Him. You are worthy of it all. glory do it again you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all Jesus Messiah for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory I want you to go into woe is me, but you know, I thought about the people in Israel that's getting their lives is being lost and they haven't received Jesus. This is what I pray when we sing that, woe is me for I'm unclean, that they'd be saying that. Then he cleansed my lips right before I died. Those lips confess Jesus Christ as Savior. And they went home. Go ahead. Woe is me For I'm unclean For my eyes have seen The Holy King And He cleansed my name shaking
Take us into hallelujah. We're going to sing hallelujah.
protect you in this day in this hour if you allow me to you must be mine you must turn yourself over to me you must know that I am the healer I am the great conqueror of everything that come against you I am your God I am your king I am most holy don't turn away from me this is a troubling time a desperate time a time that I have mentioned and told you would come this is the time you need to run to me you don't have another time this is the time you could die 
and go to hell and never, never receive me. Turn now, says the Lord your God. Turn now. I am your salvation. Thus saith the Lord your God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you want to stay there, you can, or if you can go back to your seats. The kids can be dismissed till Sunday school. Yes. Just because I'm preaching, if the Lord lays you to pray, you just stay at the altar and pray. Amen. Amen. And so, the Lord said to read Psalms 91 to pray it over your family. I'm going to try to turn back there. Just a moment. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Behold, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, that Thy, hab thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in all thy ways thou shall bear thee, they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and the otter the young lion and the dragon shalt thou tr trample under feet because he has set his love upon me Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with, with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 91. Read it and speak it over your family. Amen. This morning, this is not my message, but the way the services went I just feel a, a, the presence of the Holy Spirit you know one thing is pastor I want us to experience the Holy Spirit he He works in us in so many different ways uh, and, and I'll read this in a minute but for some the shout really is what gives them exaltation edifies them but for some it's the peaceful it's just, it's just a peace, you know. And so, so we can enter into the presence of the Lord through the shout, but we can enter in through the peace, you know. And so, every person, every person is not the same, you know. You see me up here shouting; I'm a shouter. Just because I shout doesn't mean you have to shout, you know. Just doesn't mean that you have to be like me. I'm glad y'all not like me, because <laughs> I'd be preaching to me all the time. <laughs> y'all didn't get that, but so, so, but. But there are so many ways to experience the presence of the Lord, and He works in so many different ways. And sometimes He He will work, He will work in the loudness, and sometimes He will work in the quietness. And then so there's different things that needs to be met. And and so and so sometimes if we're all shouting and and, and I'm a person that just wants to quiet, you know, most of the time I won't get ministered to because it, it bothers me. It's not saying it's not of God, but it but it's not who I am. You know, or or if I'm quiet and somebody shouts, and, and so so and so every person in here, you're here because you want to experience the presence of the Lord. And and what I was preaching last Sunday, just to clarify a little bit, it's not that I don't want people to pray for people and I want to do that, but at worship service, 
I want it to be a time that every one of us can come into the presence of the Lord. Worship is about coming into the presence of the Lord. He will make a time for prayer, and he will do those things. But, but I want to say, I'm not, I'm not getting on anyone. I'm not saying anything. But at, at during praise and worship, it's a time for us to come into the presence of God. And when you come into the presence of God, things will, things will happen. You, you know, somebody don't, may not have to go back and lay hands on you. You'll receive it. Why? Because you come into the presence of the Lord. Because there's not one here, myself included, there's not one here that's ever healed anybody. It's not one here that's ever saved anybody. It's not one here. Have we prayed for people and that's happened? Yes. But what is it? It's the Holy Spirit working through us. Yeah onto others and it's transferable and so that's what and so every person in here what I want I want you to be able to experience the Holy Spirit working in you and when the Holy Spirit begins to work in you it, he will all, all of a sudden begin to work through you he, but, but for the Holy Spirit to work through you he first has to work in you Amen, and and that's what we don't we don't understand it's, it's the fullness and so if I want the Holy Spirit to work through me for healing the Holy Spirit's really got to be in me. The anointing, you know, we talk about the anointing, and, and Isaiah said it destroys the yoke, and the and the anointing, the, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It, it, you know, really, to bring forth the word with boldness, to bring forth the word of how God wants it, it takes the Holy Spirit, and we'll, we'll go into that some tonight. But I, but as we was over there, and, and so, and just show you, sometimes uh, it's over, and I've read this this week, but as we was over praying, I was seeking face the Lord. The Lord brought this scripture back to me, and I, I, I just want to I just want to read read this. It's out of Mike, uh, Micah, and uh, if you got a good Bible, it's on page nine eighty two. <laughs> okay, uh, but Micah, it's uh, it's so he's right after Joel. He's before uh, Zechariah. Before that, but I want to just read the first few scripture verses of this, and this is not my sermon. But God's word said this But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us come up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word from Jerusalem. You know, that's one reason why we're supposed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem right here, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift us up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We know that is yet to happen. But the, and so we're in a time where it's wars and rumors of war. But what, but what I really wanted to just for a moment to look at us and, and, and see what God's word said in the last days, that God in, in the mountains, you know what? If you're down in the valley, it's time to come out of the valley of who you are. It's time to walk to the top of the mountain because God has established his word in the top of the mountains. Can I tell, can I tell you all something, Christian? I, I just got to be true. We get, we get offended over, over the littlest things. Amen. Not only do we get offended, but but we 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 because we try to live like righteous, we all of a sudden we we become judgmental, huh? Because you know what we're doing? We're gauging others by ourselves. You know, I I live righteous, but I can tell you, it's it may be people in here live more righteous than me. But you know what? It's also people in here that don't live as righteous as me. But you know, but I don't judge y'all. By, I don't judge y'all by me. I judge me by me. Amen. And each person has to judge herself. That's why God's Word said every person needs to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. And, and, we, and we need to work it out. And, and in working that out, all of us is not going to be the same. You know, uh, some of y'all probably don't eat fish. Some of you probably don't eat chicken. Some of you probably don't eat beef. But do you... Do you do you not have a relationship with others that do that? Myself, I like it all. What do you mean they can't hear me? Huh, I don't know why. 
Oh, okay. Now, can y'all hear me now? Let me t let me turn me up, so I don't have to eat this mic this morning. Y'all, give me just a second. I had to turn Jeannie down. I don't have one of these at home and I can do it with, so I have to do it here. <laughs> can y'all hear me now? <laughs> I, I love you, hon. Uh, but, to, but to get back, and so every one of us is different. And, and, and we're a church, and we've grown to the size. It's, so, it, it's people here on so many different levels. And, this is, and, and I, I just need to share this, and I'm still going to preach to you. Don't worry. So it's people here on so many different levels. Some people has just come in and they're down here, and some people are up here. And and and, and so what happens because we we lose touch because someone's down here and we up here we lose touch. And so in our church there has become a disparity. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So so what time is it? If, and I'm not saying I'm up here above everybody, but I'm using this as an analogy as that. I'm up here. Can I tell y'all something? It took me a while to get here. And I'm not coming back down here. Do you, I'm not coming back down here. So what? So now what am I to do? I'm to get those that's down here and bring them up. That what what we got to bring people up, praise God. You know, God, and that's why God's word said, "No tear down." You know, how many y'all? How many y'all's ever walked up, walked to the top of the mountain, and you know you had to go back down? You don't look forward to it. Uh, you know, you know. Can I tell y'all to get to where I'm at? It's been a long, rough journey. And it, it's been some. I tell you what, it's been some excellent days. But I'm telling you what, it's been some days that ain't been so good. But but you know what? I wouldn't trade one of them. I wouldn't trade one of them, whether it's good or bad, because God has been able to bring me to here. And now God is trying to, He's trying to take some, He's trying to take some people. I'm, can I just tell y'all? Some of y'all, I ain't gonna come down to y'all's level. I done passed through that way one time, and that's enough for me. As, as, church, as, as, a, as a church, the children of Israel, let me tell you, when they left Egypt, a 13-day journey, it took them 40 years to go 11 to 13 days. And you know what? You know where most of them 40 years were spent? Going around the same mountain. They might, they might be here and they would leave and three years later they would be back. Can I tell you something? I'm tired of going around. I'm going over. Because, you know, when you go around what I just read, at the mountaintops, God is going to establish. Praise God. Church, can I tell you something? Let's stop going around the mountain and let's climb the mountain. Praise God. Let's be a Moses. Let's be a Joshua. If you can't get but halfway, praise God. Don't worry. You'll hear the reveling down below you, but you'll come to a different level in God. You know what? Joshua could not... God, Joshua could not go with Moses to the top because he was not at a place to walk to the top. But I want to tell you something. Moses went up and wrote the Ten Commandments and he come back down and he done that. But guess who took his stead? Guess who, when Moses walked off the scene, guess who took his place? Joshua. At that moment that the, that the law was given, he wasn't able to go to that place. But I want to tell you something. He, he desired because I believe that he heard some things and he seen some things and praise God. And he experienced some things halfway up the mountain he said I'm not satisfied at this place at praise God I want to get to the top of the mountain praise God can I tell you all something church I'm not satisfied praise God I'm not satisfied where we at praise God I'm ready to get to the top of the mountain and praise God and there I glorify Jesus Christ and there I lift him up and praise God and magnify him and praise God I'm not going around no more I'm going over praise God I'm going up and I'm going out praise God hallelujah Glory. Hallelujah. It's, can I just, I was going to preach on humility, but praise God, that we'll, we'll preach that another day. But I'm going to tell you all something, church. 
God is in the valley. But I'm going to tell you something. He didn't establish his word in the valley. <laughs> I read it in Micah. God did not establish his word in the mountain. He in the valley. He established it on the mountaintop. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. You need some establishment in your life. Get out of the valley. Praise God. Start taking your journey up over the mountain. Praise God. Instead, and start climbing. It don't matter if you can only take three steps today. Take them three steps. Praise God. Why? Because you're going to be closer to the top than you was before you took those three steps. Can I tell y'all something? God is getting ready to do something. And praise God. And God, I believe God is not just calling Moses. I believe God is calling the church to the top of the mountain. He's not calling one of us. And praise God, I'm telling you something. He's calling us all. And praise God. Because while on the mountaintop, praise God, there's only one voice to be heard. And that's the voice of God. And praise God. And Moses could hear the reveling down in the valley. But he didn't hear it when he was on the mountaintop. The only thing he heard was the voice of God. Can I tell y'all something, church? It's time that the church gets to the mountain. And we stop hearing all these voices. Because at the mountaintop, you're only going to see the voice, hear the voice of God because their God is going to pin his word upon our heart and praise God that we got to go to that place in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The people in the valley couldn't hear God. But Joseph couldn't hear the people in the valley. We, we got to get to a place God is calling us to the place that we stop hearing the voice of man, but we start hearing the voice of God. God is calling the church, and he said, he said yeah, it's long enough. We, God speaks to us, and praise God, we don't even hear him because there's so much noise going around around us, and praise God, and we speak something and say, God speaks something, and because I don't understand it, I don't accept it. Why don't I accept it? Because somebody, a man's told me different. We can go back to doctors. We can go back to, I'll just pray. We can go back to organizations. We can go back to denominations. You can take whatever you want. Can I tell you something? Some people are so stuck on organizations, so stuck on denominations. Listen, I, I, I'm proud to be a assembly of God. I'm not down. I, I'm not doing that. But you know what? We have got so stuck on, on denomination and on that. We, and we're hearing the voice of man and not hearing the voice of God. What are you talking about? Organizations, they write it in their law said it's okay to have homosexuals in the pulpit. They 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 write it, they put it in their paper, and everybody sitting underneath them. Now I got to decide: Am I going to be a part of that? Is this really is this really true, or is this really not? And so all of a sudden, you got you got a mixture, and you don't know whether it's man or whether it's God speaking to you. Why? Because those things are done behind secret doors and they ain't done on the mountaintop. What do you mean they ain't done on the mountaintop? Because they because they're not hearing the voice of God. I'll just I'll just speak. It's it, it's thing, it's things happen. In this church, I'll bring it back to this church, and I'm not and I'm not down at some, but I'm talking just our church. There's people here that's listening to the voice of men instead of the voice of God. You know why you're hearing it? Because you're not at a place to hear the voice of God. You know what? Those six million people, they were reveling. They couldn't even, they, they didn't even know what was what was going on. God listen. God had blessed Israel, and we know it. God had blessed them when they come out of Egypt. How did he bless them? He gave all, all their jewelry, all their gold, all their silver, everything. They took it out. God blessed them. They, God, blessed them. And when the one person that could hear the voice of God went to the mountains, they could no longer hear. And guess what happened? Their blessing turned into a molten calf. 
and death became their God. Moses was up on the mountain. Didn't hear all of it. You know, you know where he's, this is me. You know where I think he started hearing it? When he got to the place where Joshua was. Because Joshua said, can you hear that murmur? Can you hear that reveling? And Moses said, and Moses heard it. And when he heard it, when he went down, what did he do? He broke the word of God. You know where the word of God is broken? It's broken in the valley of your life. The word of God, what do you mean the word of God's broken in the valley? Moses carried that, listen, Moses carried that Ten Commandments and praise God, he carried it from the mountaintop, he carried it down, he was probably he was probably exalted and praise God, exhorting and said, can you believe it? Praise God, I seen God, I got to see his hinder parts and praise God and speaking to Joshua the whole time and telling him about the Ten Commandments before him and praise God, he was proud of him but by the time he got to the valley can I tell you something, by the time he got to the valley, he was so aggravated and praise God and he was so decimated because of how the people were acting and it, praise God and he took up his knee and praise God and he took that stone and he broke the word of God and praise God and the people seen him break it and, and praise God and they had made the molten camp but I want to tell you something he just didn't break the molten camp and said he ground it to pieces and praise God and when he ground it to pieces he went to go back to the mountain and praise God and when he got back to the mountain top and praise God he had done hewed it up but God wrote again I'm going to tell you something if God don't write his word up on the tables of your heart praise God I'm going to tell you something, you're going to get down in a valley, praise God, and you're going to come down in a valley and because of the noise and all that is around you, you're going to listen to those voices and praise God, and in your life, the word of God's going to be broken and praise God, and you won't be following the word of God, you're going to be following what man says, hallelujah. I, I'm going to tell you, I know this sermon's from the Holy Spirit, because I didn't think about none of this before I started preaching, but I'm telling you something. You know what brought Moses down off the mountain? The reveling. He wanted to stay up there, but the reveling brought him down. Can I tell you something? Till we come in unity, come in one accord. I don't care how high you think you are. If you get to a place and start hearing them voices, it's going to bring you down. It's going to bring you down. Can I tell you something? I've been down long enough. I've been down. I was down for 30 years before I accepted Jesus. And he, and he raised me up. But it's been in that 36 years, there's been times I've been up and it's been times I've been down. Praise God, sometimes I've even looked at myself and thought I was a yo-yo. How, everybody know, y'all know what a yo-yo is? You know, I, I'm lucky to get one up and down now. But I'm gonna tell y'all something. When I was young, I could take that thing and walk the dog. Y'all y'all don't y'all don't know what that is, do you? You run that thing down along the floor and that praise God and they call it walking the dog. I could do that. Praise God. But I can't do that. You know, can I tell y'all young people something? Y'all walking the dog, but you ain't gonna be able to walk it all the time. It's gonna come the time and praise God if you can get your arm up and down to work the yo yo, it's gonna be good. Boy, I, you know, I'm only 66. That's young. Amen. And, and, I, and, and I look around and I see some people 80 doing more than me. And I said, Lord. Because of, of all I've been through. But you know what? I don't let that keep me down. If I can get up and work two hours more, I'm going to get up and work two hours. You, can I tell? Can I, I'm talking about the young people. Y'all walk the dog right now, but it, it, it's going to change. When I was, <laughs> but now let me get the y'all older people. 
Let's get to us. You know what? We know how to do it. But we just don't do it. We know how to do it, but we don't do it. Do you realize that when Moses received those Ten Commandments, if, and this is just me right off the top of me, he was 80 years old. Guess what he did? At 80 years old, he decided to come up out of the valley and to go to the mountain. I don't care what your age is in here this morning. You can get to the mountaintop. God, God is not leading us around the mountain. We're leading ourselves around the mountain. God is trying to take us over the top. And this just, just come back to me. And 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 I got to share this. Years ago, I don't know how many years ago it was, I went out, Brother David's mom, Sister Ruth, and she said, I had a vision. I, I, I had a vision. And she said it, and we was at the, going up a mountain. And she said, I could see the crest of the mountain. And at the time, her husband wasn't saved. He got saved. But she said, I looked up and before me was Garland. And she said, Lord, what is this? The Lord said, push him over the top. Push him over the top. She died before he did, but he found Jesus because why? He went out the top. Can I tell you, it's some people on the path that are standing in your way for you to progress any further. They're standing in your way because every time you get to them, you can't get around them because everything else is happening. But can I tell you something? Push them. Don't push them out of the way. Push them over the top. Praise God. Can I tell y'all something, church? It's time for some people that's lower down, that's wanting to get to a place, but they're not able to get there because something is blocking it. Praise God. And it's probably coming through a people. Praise God. Start pushing them people towards the top and push them out over the top. Praise God. Don't push them out of the way because if you push them out of the way, they're going to die lost where they're at because you're going to push them off the straight and narrow. Praise God. It's time that we stop killing people. It's time that, praise God, and we start giving people life and praise God and if somebody's close enough to you and praise God and you and you ain't got to push them because you over talk to them but they're in over link of you can I tell you something reach out and grab them by the hand and praise God and pull them up praise God hallelujah Jesus hallelujah she come up from her didn't she praise God you know just now the Lord healed your back when I done that praise God God hallelujah I speak it, praise God. I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I receive it, praise God. I'm going to tell you something. It's time, praise God. Grab a hold of somebody. If they don't want to move, drag them, praise God. If they're getting in your way and you're underneath them, but you want to go to a place, that, praise God, that you haven't been and they stand in your way, push them, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everybody in this church house this morning that, praise God, that God doesn't want any of us down here. You've been down here long enough. Go up there. Where did God say he was going to establish his word? On the mountaintop. You know, when David, when David looked and he said, I'm going to take Jerusalem. You have to understand that was just a hillside. 
we look and we see we see we see the Temple Mount. But you know when David went in, he didn't go right to the top. He went in and defeated the Jebusites and took over their place. But his desire was this is my house, this is my dwelling place, but I want to establish the word of God. And so I've been there and seen this. I've been and I've stood on David's palace. On the courts of his palace of where he looked out and he seen Bathsheba. That's when he looked to the south. But I'm going to tell you something. If you take that same place where he looked at Bathsheba and you turn around and you look to the north, you know what he's seen? He's seen Mount Moriah, but he's seen where the Temple Mount was going to be. See, he was lower than the top. But God was going to establish his word on top of the mountain. And David, and God said, because you've shed blood, I'll let you gather materials, but you cannot build it. Church, we shed blood. We kill people. God ain't going to let us get to the top. And so David defeated the Jebusites and he had all the materials laid out and Solomon built the temple. A glorious temple he built but at times it was destroyed. But I want to tell you the temple was destroyed the buildings around it was destroyed but I want to tell you something. The mountaintop was never destroyed. Things around about you may have been destroyed. But I want to tell you something this morning. The mountaintop has never been destroyed. Because God established it on the mountains and out of Jerusalem his word is going to be established because where is the center of Jerusalem on the mountaintop where is a church going to be established it's going to be established on the mountaintop it ain't going to be established with gossip it's not going to be established with bickering and, and fighting. It ain't going to be established with cheating, lying, adultery, fornication. We can go on because we talked about them last week. They're the works of the flesh. But I want to tell you where the church is going to be established when we walk from where we're at and we walk to the top of the mountain and we let the word of God establish it. You know, a lot of us, we haven't got there yet. But we're desiring to get there. <laughs> don't worry if, we, if you don't get there in 13 days. I've been 36 years. And what happened after the 40 years? Moses wasn't able to go over into the promised land, no physically. But you know what, God because God's word had done been established. You know what he told Moses? Go up to the top of the mountain and look. Look what your hands has done these past 40 years. They're getting ready to go in and they're getting ready to establish it. Can I tell y'all something, church? Some of us don't know who some of us, our life may be drawing to a close. But God don't want you to view your life down here. All you're going to look is to the face of the mountain. But I want to tell you something. God is telling you to get up from where you're at and walk to the top of that mountain 
and look out and see what I have established for you. Church, begin to get to the top of the mountain and look and see what Jesus Christ has established for us at the cross at Calvary. Praise God. And look out and see what God has done for us at Praise God. It's time, praise God, for us to get to the top and praise God and begin to look out and see what no man has done but God has done. Can I tell you something? The church wasn't established by man. The church was established by Jesus Christ and praise God. And I'm going to tell you something. He says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and praise God and the gates of hell is not going to prevail against it don't worry about the flesh and don't worry about those things that's trying to destroy the church don't destroy don't worry about those nations that's trying to destroy the church God has established it where did he establish it he established it on a hill praise God he established it on a mountain in Mount Moriah and there at cross of Calvary and there that cross stood and Jesus went on it praise God but he died on the mountaintop praise God I want to tell you something Jesus didn't die down in the valley of his life but praise God he said you don't take my life I lay it down for you and he's laid it down for each and every one of us and praise God and where did he do it at we may have thought it was down in the valley of the suffering and all the things that he done but I want to tell you something he hung on that cross on the mountain top and I can tell you something church and praise God I'm ready to get to the mountain top and praise God I'm ready for the word of God to be established in the church once again hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to apologize for hollering. I love to holler and preach. That's the only way I know how to preach. But can I tell you something? Why do I do that? That's how God established me. That's how God found me. And praise God, but I want to tell you something. Underneath of these feet, there's a firm foundation. Why? Because they are on the rock. Hallelujah. And the rock is higher than I am. Praise God. Jehovah hides me under the rock. Go tell my enemy I'm under the rock. For Jehovah hides me under the rock. Hallelujah. Church. Your feet, and this is my last closing, church, your feet, if you in Jesus Christ has been established on the rock. And I'm going to tell you something, the gates of hell may come against it, but it's not going to prevail. Praise God. Stop looking at the gates of hell and start looking to the cross because the gates of hell can't, can't prevail. Hallelujah. Let's stand. I didn't know I could preach for three minutes, did you? <laughs> I can, can't I, Brother Eddie? He seen me do it one time. Four people come to me and said, I didn't know you could preach that quick. But church, I'll give you this mic in just a minute. I'm getting ready to pass this mic off. But I want to tell you, if you're in this congregation and you've never established your life in Jesus Christ, today is the day of your salvation. I'm speaking it. All the voices, all the clutter, all the noise around you, God has lifted you to a place today that you'll be able to hear his voice. And his voice is saying, Come unto me, ye that labor on a heavy laden, for I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is life. Come unto me. Hallelujah. If you're in this congregation today, step out from where you're at. And if you know you're standing beside somebody that is lost, just reach out and grab their arm or their hand and say, can I walk with you to that altar? Drag them up the mountain. Hallelujah. I'm going to be standing here. I know it's lost people in here this morning. All right, come on. This is our time to come if you need 
something from the Lord? You want to give your heart to the Lord? You want to reestablish your heart? Let's come. Hallelujah. for one another tell tell people something but you are dismissed stay as long as as you want <clears throat> do you have uh, way up on the mountain no I'm starting with the course down in the valley way down in the valley when the Savior heard my feeble cry, now I'm back up on the mountain, way up on the mountain, drinking from the fountain that never will run dry. There was darkness all around me when my Savior found me, way down in the valley of despair. But I told him all my troubles. All my joys he doubled. Now I'm drinking on the mountain. And <laughs> wishing in his love. I was down in the valley. Way down in the valley. When the Savior heard my feeble cry. I'm trying to hit it. Now I'm back up on the mountain. Way up on the mountain. Drinking from the fountain. That never will run dry. If you don't watch, oh Satan, 
He'll get you in the valley. Stay behind you, and he can never find you. Welcome on the mountain to fight a good fight. I was down in the valley, way down in the valley, when the Savior heard my cry. Now I'm back up on the mountain, way up on the mountain. Drinking from the fountain that never will run dry. That goes with this message. I was down in the valley, way down in the valley, when my Savior heard my feeble cry. Now I'm back up on the mountain, way up on the mountain. Drinking from the fountain I can't hit that. that never will run dry. There was darkness all around. When my Savior found me Way down in the valley of despair But when I told him all my troubles All my joys he doubled Now I'm on the mountain Rejoicing in his love I was down in the valley Way down in the valley When the Savior heard my people cry I'm back up on the mountain, way up on the mountain, drinking from the fountain that never will run dry. If you don't watch old Satan, he'll get you in the valley, he'll you from the Savior's guiding light. Oh, but he will stay behind you, and he can't never find you when you're away. Way down in the valley When the Savior heard my feeble cry Hallelujah! Now I'm back up on the mountain Way up on the mountain Drinking from the fountain of course That again. never will run dry I was down in the valley Way down in the valley When my Savior heard my feeble cry I'm back up on the mountain, way up on the mountain, drinking from the fountain that never will run dry. Drinking from the fountain that never will run dry. <laughs> 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 Tiffany said, when, I, when I'm trying to do that mountain, she said, I can't help <laughs> Praise God. We see y'all tonight. Y'all have a blessed afternoon. Yes. Be blessed.